So with that, let's go ahead and log into Blueworks. I'm just going to do a quick high level demo. Um, if you have been using Blueworks for a while, this might be a little bit of a repeat, but maybe you'll learn something new. Um, and this is the demo that I give quite often. So uh, if you've already seen it, my apologies, but we'll kind of just do some some basics here. Um, so the, the use case we'll use is HR onboarding, right? That's a very common use case in process mapping. Um, we're creating a new blueprint in my sandbox space. Um, so the concepts here, if you're not familiar with Blueworks Live, is that you have spaces and blueprints. So they're kind of the two core artifacts. There's other things like decisions, uh, policies, and process apps, but mainly we're, we're working with uh, blueprints and spaces. So my new blueprint is called HR onboarding. And this is not going to look like a process diagram right out of the gate. This is going to look like a virtual whiteboard with sticky notes on it that we can move around. Uh, and that's intentional because this makes it much easier, much more accessible to maybe stakeholders or subject matter experts that are not as familiar with process mapping, right, or process diagrams. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a few milestones here. We'll, we'll just build this really quick. So let's say that the first milestone, we're going to start with the offer going out. So the HR might send the offer letter. They're going to review the offer. They're going to sign the letter. And then they'll return the letter. If it's a physical letter, right? It's probably an email, but we'll leave it like that. So once they've accepted the offer, we're going to do some things around documentation. This will be things like, um, we'll do it. This is a US-based use case. So we'll say they select a health plan, choose 401k. We might perform a background check. Then we might do some things in facilities. This will be things like order a new laptop. And then lastly will be our first day. This will be host welcome orientation. So there we go. So again, pretty simple process, but you get the idea that we have these steps that are happening. I'm not as worried about the exceptions or the decisions that are being made. I'm not as worried about the order that this is happening. So it's just kind of a first pass. Give me the big things that happen within this process. So think about it as like a design thinking or some kind of brainstorming. Um, and these are all move. I can move these uh, drag and drop. Uh, so it's very easy to get started. But the goal is not this visual. Right, the goal is what is behind this. We're going beyond just the two dimensional picture because I could probably create this in Excel or PowerPoint, but it's behind what's behind each activity, which is important. So we have all of these properties that I can choose from. I can add my own custom properties. And so we're gonna go ahead and start to type HR and you see the list of our very messy sandbox, but you see all these different terms that have already been established. Right, this is one of the most powerful features, and it's what creates that many-to-many -many dependency map where I can later go back and say, show me all the processes where HR is involved, or show, show me every activity where this system is touched. Right, That ability to very quickly find and cross-reference uh, is huge, and we can clean this up. We can uh, synchronize this with other sources of truth. Again, going back to that Open Pages Blueworks Live webinar, uh, where we can synchronize the risks and controls coming out of open pages and not have two sources of truth. We only have one source of truth. So at some point, we're ready to turn this into a process diagram. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a diagram here, and we'll see that the HR swim lane is added because participant and swim lane are linked, but it's very easy to add new swim lanes and change them. And if we drag an activity onto the new swim lane, it will automatically pick up that participant. So really quick, I'm going to just drag this around and create our updated map. And now it looks much more like a process, right? Albeit a simple one, right? Um, and we'll do that. There you go. Um, now, this is our straight through process, This is, but it, we do see the handoffs and we do see the different steps that are happening. But now we can start to add a little more detail, a little more complexity, like what happens when they don't pass their background check? I can add a gateway that says if they pass, then we keep going. If they don't pass, what do we do? Do we end the process? Do I add some follow up steps or do I create a loop, right? Just to kind of repeat and retry, uh, probably not what we would do in real life, but 
um, you get the idea. And then another key feature is this the sub process. So when I have steps that are similar or that I want to group together, that I want to collapse into a lower level, I can select those steps and say, OK, review offer, sign the letter, return the letter. Those are all part of a larger concept that I can kind of simplify this to be accept offer. Right. And now we have a much simpler process because I can collapse that down, but I don't lose the detail. I don't lose that granularity. And so I can just expand it. I can add still add the documentation to those steps. And then I can add things like color coding um, icons. So if I go in and I say, OK, select health plan, that's a troublesome step for us. I'm going to set that as red. So colors can mean whatever you want. You can set standard color legends. And then I'm going to add a little bit of detail to this to say, OK, well, let's say. That this is using you know the HR system. And it takes about 45 minutes with two hours of wait time. And there's a couple of problems like it's highly manual. And that's very frequent and there's you know sometimes. Mistakes are made that's probably a outcome or a symptom of being highly manual, but once we do that, we can start to add an overlay of analysis that goes beyond just that visual that I can dig into some of the details that I've added, like the work time and the wait time or the systems or the problems, right? The problems will actually show a, a light heat map based on the problems. And so I've only done done this for one step, but you can imagine going beyond and, and doing this for every step. And this is where some of the, the reports and analytics are going to come in. Um, so all that said, it's extremely powerful. We use Blueworks with every single engagement, even if the client does not use Blueworks Live, whether we're doing a, a workflow automation or decision management or document processing or AI implementation, we're always using Blueworks to just set that foundation to understand how the business works today, how it could potentially work in the future. So it's something that is just universal in every single one of our methodologies. However, there are limitations, right? To keep it simple and to keep the guardrails, IBM has purposely kept it as, as kind of a, a very intuitive, very lightweight type of tool, which leaves room for a partner like Salient to come in and create some overlays to this, right? Some of the things that we talked about, process completeness, process comparisons, uh, efficiency maps, right? All of that is now going to be overlaid and adding value to this core information that you're creating inside of Blueworks Live. So let's transition and do a quick flyby on Blueworks Insights, and then we'll kind of close it out with some Q&A. So let me go ahead and log in to our Blueworks Live environment. Um, I'm using a local version just because I want to make sure you're seeing some of the early access capabilities, but um, certainly um, you know, you'll start to see most of this is all live as well. Uh, and so we're not showing you really anything that is not already available on online. And I, yeah, actually, in the interest of that, let's just go ahead and show the live version. So again, you can log in three different methods. If you are interested in gaining access, all you have to do is go to blueworksinsights.com, go to register and just put in your info and we'll get back to you um, on getting early access to or getting full access to to the free trial and then we'll talk about how you can get um, full access moving forward. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log into our account. And that first view I get is my administration dashboard, but you can customize what you see when you first come in. Uh, and so this is more of an admin view, but you can see on the left we do have out of the box dashboards. These are all drag and drop so I can move these around. I can create new charts and new dashboards. Uh, but some of the things we see here, we have a news feed. You can see, OK, there's I created that brand new HR onboarding use case, um, but I can get a quick snapshot of, the, of what's going on. But some of the more important admin views are things like activity reports, right? Just understanding what is going on in my account so you can set a time window and you can say within the default is 30 days, but you can set that to two months three years, whatever you want. And this information that shows up is going to be relevant to that time window. And down here I can see all of the different things that have happened within that time window. So you know, almost 600 thing, you know, activities that I've done, whether that's updating, creating, deleting. Um, and so I can click into this and actually get a detailed view of when I'm actually working more in the account. So it just gives a little bit more of, a, of an oversight for our administrators. But it goes beyond just administration, right? We can run 
different kinds of blueprint reports like active blueprints within a given month. We just started June, so not a whole lot going on uh, Monday. Um, but if I go back to May, I can see all of the updates that have been done just within our account, right? All the different things based on views and based on edits. Flip side is true too, right? This is the most active blueprints, but what about inactive blueprints? Those are maybe more important. You know, I published a blueprint a year ago and I haven't touched it since then. That's a problem. The, the goal of Blueworks is that you're never done, right? You want that continual review cycle and the ability to go in and make sure that things are relevant and still accurate. And so, yes, our sandbox is not up to date, but ideally your environment would be. Um, and so you can go in and this is where that work management feature is inheriting from where we can even set up KPIs. In our case, we set up three month and 12 month KPIs or SLAs, but you can set up whatever alternate time window you want. So which uh, blueprints that have been published have actually been looked at or changed or approved in a period of time. Um, some of the other things like the tag blueprints I mentioned, this is a way for us to very quickly find blueprints based on their tags. So I can choose multiple tags. So in Blueworks Live, you can search by tag, but you can't kind of mix and match the tags. So if I go in and I look at, um, I'll just pick uh, finance, right? And I, I, if I pick a finance tag, it's going to filter everything that has that finance tag, right? And then the other alternate view of this is if I have the space tagged, we should be able to inherit the space tag in the blueprint. So I can find blueprints that are actually part of a tag that has that same, let's use finance again, um, where it's either in the tag itself or, you know, we'll we see like here onboarding, right? Um, this, the gold tags are where the space itself is tagged, therefore the blueprint itself is inheriting. So just ways to get at that information. Um, let's talk a little bit about the blueprints as well. So looking at things like SIPOC and RACI, um, and this is where we've added the feature that we can, um, or that's my HR onboarding, let's go back here. Um, where we can actually edit the properties of every activity and feed that back into Blueworks Live. That's where this is where that's going to appear. Um, and so things like SIPOC, right, where we just pull the supplier input output customers from each individual activity. We are looking at doing it at the space level as well. So across multiple blueprints, we can create SIPOC reports. RACI, same thing, right, where we have this RACI matrix of all the responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed fields in that blueprint. Um, looking at things like value stream mapping, efficiency charts, right? And here's our scorecarding, right? Where I can set up my own custom metrics that are not being captured in Blueworks Live today. And this allows me to then run uh, scorecard reports that's going to look across multiple blueprints and let me see kind of how they all stack up based on those different metrics, right? In this case, I have those 15 different metrics and I can look at it even as a radar chart. Um, to get some vis visibility there. A few other things that I'm going to touch on, and one, I'll leave time for questions because there's a lot in here to cover, as we saw in, in the feature report. Um, but things like uh, looking at the taxonomy view, right? This is a big one because if we want to be able to organize our blueprints into a, a taxonomy, traditionally we can use spaces to do that, but now we can use a discovery map to do that and align maybe to the spaces, but really to act as our table of contents that not only has the hierarchies, right, which are basically represented in Blueworks Live by sub processes, just by that sub process construct in Blueworks, where we get to L1, L2, L3, and down to L4. And if I click on that, where if we've done a linked process, those links are permalinks. So we don't care where this blueprint lives in our account we can always find it from this view, right? So as long as that blueprint is our most recent source of truth, and then I can open that either in Blueworks Live or in Insights, um, I can set a link to every single one of our L4s or L5s or L3s, however deep you want your levels to go. And then we've also added the ability to set up different visualizations of all of these blueprints, right? So we can kind of go in and say, you know, show me how these structure, how these go that way. We can do it as a radial diagram where we can see all of the different components in our hierarchy, and then both a vertical and horizontal icicle chart. 
So just different ways to look at the same information. We're not, again, not doing anything in insights that's updating that information yet. Um, it's just showing us what is in our Bloomer Live account. And along those lines, those uh, relay back to things like customer journey mapping. So the ability to set up a visual representation of the customer journey that shows, you know, here's a sample airline customer journey map, right? Where I even have sentiment analysis going on and each of the steps. This is basically, those are the milestones in my BlueWorks Live uh, discovery map. And then these are the activities, but then I've added these custom fields, thinking, feeling, using, and opportunities that align back to customer experience. Uh, and then the last thing I wanna show here is the space hierarchy, right? This is something that's really interesting. We're still kind of evolving this one, but this is going to be very helpful in just getting kind of a 30,000 foot view of the entire account what is going on and in our sandbox again very very messy right but i can maybe zoom into this and scroll in we'll just hide that so that's the um one of the views that we have there but i can collapse that down and then i can even drill in let's drill into my account where you can see the breadcrumbs at the top up here and this is now only showing the spaces which is still pretty messy but those are all the spaces in my sandbox, right? And again, if you click into one of those, it's going to show you that blueprint. So with that, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, I went a little long on the slides, but um, hopefully you get a good picture of all of the things that BlueWorks Live can give you and then how you can even enhance that further and add value using this free tool for BlueWorks Insights. So what I wanna do is just share how you can get access if you don't already have access. 